And we start off in the offer section and with poor little Wargaming only having a revenue of 1.1 billion allegedly last year. They need you to help out with the prize pool for the Blitz X Cup. So by buying this bundle, you do contribute to that thing. And you can read the article here. So what you get is you get 2000 gold, you get that. And uh, you get a crate that um, at least does include a 1.5% chance for a tier 9 tank. Ooh, that is such a great deal right there. Not. But at least you get the 2k gold, so that's not too bad. Not a terrible offer right here, so it can be worth it. But I do find it funny that Wargaming needs your money for their not-professional tournament. But let's now look at the rest. For example, that. For Blast Tokens, if you have the Blast Tokens... I don't recommend these tank certificates to anybody because here's the thing. There's a lot of vehicles in there that are not good. And there's going to be a lot of vehicles in there that you're not going to enjoy playing because of your specific playstyle. That's just why I don't recommend get, ever getting these. You could also, if you already have a lot of vehicles, you can get a repeat. So that's not really that great. So I don't really recommend them. Just buy the tanks directly and that's going to be a lot better deal. Then there's these uh, black box bundles right here. I mean, 3.5k gold, 14 days of premium for 12 euros. Not too bad. The black boxes themselves, you're not really going to get much out of them. Black boxes are awful. Mystery boxes are awful. And collect them all containers. They're pretty much... Those are the lowest three types of containers that Wargaming does sell. I, I do just find it sad that the, the black boxes are the main marketing term here rather than the things that are the actual value. Yeah, but, that you know... Gambling sells, and that is also true for other uh, crates right here. Now, obviously, there's only three of them in here, so and only 2.5k gold, so you lose some gold, you lose uh, some premium time, so not worth it at all. And uh, yeah, the rest of them, they just they're just more gambling crates right here. I mean, it would be nice to have a 12 euro bundle that doesn't include any gambling crates. I mean, here you have 4,000 gold and 14 days of premium, and for 12 euros, so if they would just chuck out the mystery boxes and add another 2,000 gold, it would be an amazing bundle. But unfortunately, we can't have nice things. Which brings us to resources, which include credits, so skip. Then we have the Mighty Partners for 17,500 gold. And here's the thing about these two vehicles. I mean, the 122TM is solid, but it's not quite as good as the Chimera. It loses out quite a bit, but it's fine enough. But the problem here is, the 114. It's a tier 9, and it's a tier 9 not worthy of purchase, pretty much, because the object 752 exists, for example, so there's no real point to ever purchase this vehicle with your real money. So 17.5k for these two, and uh, not anything extra besides locked times fives. I wouldn't really recommend this to anybody in terms of the value, right? They're, they're fine, but the value isn't really that great. So Thunderbolts, well... I mean, the VK-168 is a meme vehicle, complete and utter meme vehicle, that is really great for modes like gravity, but outside of that, it's very useless. The 75 TS, it is very solid, one of the better fuel rate premiums. It was given away for free in, I believe, 2020 or 2021, so keep that in mind whenever you're thinking of buying this vehicle. It was given away for free in the past, and uh, you're unlucky if you have to buy it now, but overall, 24 euros for that. It would be nice if it would include not the VK-168, but, you know, it's not the greatest of bundles if they would sell the E75 TS on its own for, let's say, 6.5k, 7k gold. That would be a very good price, in my opinion. But this, yeah, unless you really love gravity mode, you're not really going to get that much value for your money right there. It's okay, though. Warhammer Skulls, let's just ignore that, because you buy these vehicles not because they're good, but because you like Warhammer. So if you like Warhammer, you probably want them. If you don't like Warhammer, yeah, well, they're shit. And then we have the 268 version 4, which does cost more than the Badger that was in the shop quite a couple of weeks ago, but it's not better, so already the value is not really amazing. Then a bundle like this one obviously does include the eye candy camouflage that, in my opinion, adds a value of zero. But you do have 30 days of premium, which is a nice thing in here. And you also get the crew XP booster. So classic upsell here, 2,000 uh, gold more for a lot more. So essentially, if you choose something, you have to basically pick this bundle. It's classic upsell. But yeah, again, the times fives are locked. 30 days of premium. That's a nice thing to have. If you really want the 268 version 4, like if you already pre-decided, hey, I want the 268 version 4, this is not too bad of a bundle to buy. But if you're not sure, do you want the vehicle? You don't want the vehicle because here's the thing. It's a solid tank. It's not amazing. It's not bad. It's just solid. 
these plates here are very weak um, for what it could be. It's not as fast as it should be, could be, for example, in World Tanks PC. Only has 5 degrees again, the pressure in the superstructures at the rear, which is a disadvantage. So overall, it is a solid vehicle. Nothing that you have to have. In terms of tank destroyers, at your 10, I would still recommend the Badger over this one. And the MX 31st prototype, good vehicle. Decent-ish price. Now the problem again here is 24 euros here. For here, the same price, you get two tier rates. And the thing is, tier rates do generally better at getting credits than a tier 9. So you're paying twice to get less credits, in a way. Because most of the time, the tier 8 credit coefficients are higher. So you get somewhat more credits in tier 8. So um, that's not the value here. It's a solid vehicle, though. But obviously, for what it's good, overpriced. Because not great for grinding credits. But it is one of the worthier of tier 9 tanks that are purchasable. Not the great, not the greatest bundle though, but certainly if you're a tank collector, it can be worth it. The STG, I mean, if you've watched this channel for a while, you, you know my exact opinion on this vehicle, and I find it quite funny because normally you have like this 1 million creds or 30 days of premium bundle that is 5.5k, and you have a Yak Tigger in it, you have a T34 in it, which are worth it for that price, but here you have the STG in it, a vehicle that is notoriously terrible at making creds due to its non-existent penetration, in a way. So, yeah, not worth that at all. Then Rampant Raiders, I mean, they're, they're two tier 7s for 8.5k. Need to say more, and there's no add-ons in here anyway. There's camouflages, there's a avatar, and there's times fives. Like, it would make more sense to buy the Chimera for 8.5k than it makes sense to buy these two. For 8.5k. Because the camera is great. And it makes a lot of credits as well. So it's good to play. And it's also useful to play. Which is very nice. And that ups the value quite a lot. The problem here is. The appendix of this bundle is the M4 Yo, Which is pretty much there. It's not a bad tank. It's not a great tank. But that's the thing. It's just there. And a tank being just there. Doesn't really make it worth buying. When there are vehicles that are great. That are good. Right? That's the problem that Wargaming have created for themselves. Right? If you release 100 average premium tanks, and you release 20 really good premium tanks, then only those 20 really good premium tanks are only bu worth buying. The others are just a waste of money, unless you want to collect them all. It is supposed to be another upsell from the single purchase to the double bundle here, but in this case, I think buying the Chimera on its own makes more sense than, the, than anything else. It includes equipment at least, so there's that. 7.5k would be better, but if you want the Chimera, if you're looking for... A credit grinding medium tank, this could be the great option right there. And then, uh, yeah, well, the, the mutant's still here, but uh, let's ignore that it is. And in the esports section, well, we have uh, four vehicles. The one with the highest ceiling that you can extract the most performance out of is probably the Waffenträger, but if you're a average to below average player, then the 50TP prototype is the one preferably. And the other bad shot Avenir is a bad shot AP with the skin. Well, as the Waffenträger is somewhat of an improvement over the regular Waffenträger Panzer IV. Now I'm going to skip over the crate section there because don't buy crates and open your free crates though. But now we're going to go to the T95 E6 draw. Now given that it's a draw, it's not great. And there's something really weird about this draw because in military context, especially in the Second World War context, using the number 88 is pretty much universally a bad idea. So I, I do hope that this is just a mistake. It definitely is, but... Yeah, using the number 88 in any of that kind of context is not a great idea. So just just putting that out there. Yeah. Basically, T95E6 though. Well, let's play it. Uh, oh, okay. The bat shot's already very friendly, right? Starting off the bat. Now, you can't be mad at, at the team in the first two seconds. But you can be mad at them in the first 20 seconds if they decide to go city. That's a different story. And uh, the bad shot, uh, the, yeah, anyway. This vehicle is essentially a heavy gun. It is the perfect heavy gun. Now, in that form, it doesn't really have any armor, so it is only really recommended to higher skilled players that already have a lot of experience in tier 10. Sort of the leopard of heavy tanks, in a way, uh, where you can really deliver a lot of performance, but if you're not good enough to extract that performance, there is really nothing that you can do to make this vehicle work. However, let's see what's gonna happen now, because Really don't like the the team staying that far back here. I mean, obviously the bat shadow lost his brain cells. 
but I don't like the rest of them staying back because one of the most important things to get in a, in a match is map control. If you control the map, you can control the battle. Unfortunately here, sort of still sitting back a little bit and the WZ now is dead. Now that's kind of a problem here because the STB, I mean, in a way, understandably, didn't want to go up there and fight Brigetto and the Leopard because the Bat Shadows bat shit crazy and has now essentially, well, cost us the match. Like, I appreciate those two guys' effort in a way. But, um, yeah, it was a bit in vain and I'm gonna try to get out of here now. Obviously, my main uh, objective in a game like this is there is no, no way of winning this in a way. So, the best thing to do is to simply sit back Use all of these guys as mobile hit point repositories. Like I'm gonna move myself behind the bat chat here. Um, like to use all of these guys' hit points to my advantage. Maybe get some damage out of this because that's the only chance to, to really do anything here. Like there's no point fighting in the front line here because there is no no, no goal to be achieved uh, by fighting the enemies like that in, in that regard. Um, so yeah, obviously the problem is they're gonna fall apart way quicker than I can do 3,000 damage or anything. So yeah, two minutes. Everybody, two minutes. That is, that is something I noticed uh, in, in Blitz for a while now, that the matches are getting faster and faster and faster. And uh, that is not a good thing. Because the faster the match, the less time you have to actually use strategy and think about what's happening. Other than now, it's gonna rush in like a bum and do damage. That's not very fun. All right. They're all falling apart now. Let's try to do some damage here. I mean, the Conway is not going to be that big of a deal to deal with. And uh, now it's only the Batshot alive, who completely ran away. And he has unfortunately left me completely. And he's probably going to go drown himself. And, uh, yeah. Now, this is the worst This is the worst type of player that you can have, right? A player that's mad and useless. So here we go on a map that was out of the rotation and is now back in the rotation, which means that probably the majority of the player base forgot that it even existed. I don't know how to play it anymore. Yeah, map rotation truly is a great thing, especially for the average player base that have no recollection of these maps probably existing. So yeah, Wargaming loves complicating the game, don't they? Now, please move over a little bit. Thank you. That's very lovely. So, oops. Well, at least he got shot instead of me. So there's that. But a pro tip, by the way. To get really good, you gotta be a bit selfish. That's right, because like, if you take all the shots for your teammates, you're gonna die. So let's see. I'm gonna avoid that. Now we also know that the guy's camping there, which is very nice. You did a gr great job, Object 260. I'm proud of you. But um, yeah, I'm in mean, the map rotation. I don't know what the point is, really. I mean, yes, hello. Let's complicate the game by adding or removing maps that everybody forgets how to play, and then we add them again so nobody knows how to play them, which makes the match quality worse, probably. But anyway, what do I know? What to do I know anyway? So, let's see. We can get that. Nope. Can't get that one. The 260 is a bit mad now, but hey, I took the shot from the 183, so you... we're even now. Let's see. Uh, obviously, the problem is that this vehicle is a heavium. Which means it's not as fast as a medium tank. It can fight medium tanks very well. But if the medium tanks are just sitting in a corner like that, you can't really fight anybody because this is one of those vehicles where you want to fight people that don't fight back. So, ideally, you don't peek places like that because you have a massive cupola on top that is easily pinned and there is a TVP right there that is going to be very horny for my hit points. Which means I'm going to have to move away from this position right here and hope that the rhino's will to peak is stopped by my four teammates that are sitting around there okay, let's see now another tvp is gonna go for the vehicle that doesn't exist and the vehicle that doesn't exist now literally doesn't exist but um uh, yeah now here's the problem right if you have a team that has map control but doesn't use said map control then you're still going to lose that battle most of the time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to get away from the line of combat here. Like, I don't want to be the guy that all these enemies run into, basically. Because that way, I'm going to lose my hit points and die. Which is a bad thing if you want to uh, win the battle. Now, let's see that TVP is going to deal with that. But the problem is I can't go th Okay, of course he lost. <sighs> yes, I love this game. <laughs> see, here's the thing. I like making Blitz videos. It's just playing Blitz that kind of complicates the whole scenario. <laughs> 
Um, let's see what we do here. Because obviously, I mean, I can go for the 100 from behind. He's obviously just going to turn around and kill me, but what else can I do? The TVP is up there. He's just going to go right there, peek me, and kill me. So that's also going to be very enjoyable and fun to, to do. Um, but yeah. It would have been nice if the STRVK would have been in a better position for me to leech his hit points. But unfortunately, he's going out there for himself. And uh, is... Well, fight, fighting a decent fight, I suppose. But uh, yeah, and the, the STB threw away instead of protecting from the TVP. But I can do that myself. And now, but the good thing is those two guys are going for the... Um, and now the no, that guy's dead as well, so I can't even... Can't even leech off the Object 260 anymore. Ay, 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 ay. Can actually fight people. Now, the thing is, I got a thousand hit points, which is more than I need to take a shot from the E100, which means I can live for a bit. Uh, but the problem is, obviously, they can just cap and uh, track me, which is not bad. But now I track him. He can kill me because his reload is essentially less than the time it takes me to shoot twice, but then there's a Rhino as well. So, yeah, 7 1. But here's the thing it works. It works. I'm not going to play another battle. I've had it. But that works. Anyway. With that said, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. And remember, talking about Blitz can be fun. Playing it... Hey, the cock and balls doesn't sound that bad after all, huh?